Hi, I'm Evangelist Dan Steep. Thank you for joining us on the, the, the Revival Now broadcast. I'm coming to you live from Marysville, Ohio, United States. Thanks for joining us today. As you come on board in the, in the broadcast, please say hello to me in the comment section and let me know where you're watching from. This is day 19 of our 21 days of prayer and fasting. So we're, we're just giving thanks to God for His faithfulness. Uh, he's more faithful to us than we are to Him and that we are to ourselves. So we always have lots to give thanks for. If you're uh, joining us in, late in the, in the fast, it's never too late. We've got three days to go. And if you want to get in on uh, the fun... Just uh, go to our website at RevivalNow.com, and you can, you can download a PDF document of our prayer and fasting guide. It'll give you lots of biblical foundation, practical tips and suggestions, and a daily focus to guide you from day to day in your prayer and fasting. Today, we're, we're, we're praying specifically for the Revival Now leadership and ministry team globally. So that's in the U.S., Kenya, Tanzania, and even in Pakistan as we're uh, building relationships and making plans, big plans for reaping a great harvest of souls this year in Pakistan. So we give thanks to God for that, and we're going to be praying uh, just for our overall team globally if you have any prayer requests, we have, uh, we've had prayer requests uh, continuing to come in, and uh, even today, so uh, you can share those prayer requests with us uh, in, on the Facebook comment section. Uh, we're, we're banned from YouTube for the time being, but you can still uh, comment on Facebook. Um, info at RevivalNow.com, you can email them to us, and of course you can send messages to us by Facebook Messenger, and we will be honored to be able to pray for each and every one of those needs as they come in. We thank God for uh, what He's doing. We've seen some great uh, answers to prayer, uh, some great blessing and provision from God in terms of uh, new jobs, raises, um, businesses starting, vehicles paid off or vehicles paid in full, uh, all kinds of uh, good stuff that's going on. And we believe that it's just the beginning. 2023 is a year of wonders, so don't delay. Jump on board with us as uh, we, we persevere and we press through to through the, to the finish line of the 21 days of prayer and fasting. And then don't forget, we're fa we pray and fast every Wednesday. So every Wednesday, you can join our Revival Now team in prayer and fasting. Uh, we, we want to faithfully do that specifically for the harvest, but we pray and fast for um, all of our team, all of our leadership, everyone connected to this ministry. We, we pray for you, so join us together in prayer and fasting every Wednesday throughout the year. What does prayer and fasting accomplish? There's so many things that, that prayer and fasting accomplishes. One of those things is it brings revelation. In fact, we, we spent one entire day of this fast fasting and praying for supernatural revelation. Hey, Pastor Donna, thanks for joining us. Hey, as you join us on the broadcast, join Pastor Donna in the comment section. Let me know where you're watching from. It's always a blessing uh, to see who's, who's come on board with me in the broadcast. Supernatural revelation. There's a story in Acts chapter 9. It's the story of the conversion of Saul, who ultimately became named Paul, the great apostle Paul, who wrote the majority of the New Testament, the majority of the books in the New Testament. He had an ex a conversion experience on the road to Damascus, and he came from that experience uh, 
blind and disoriented. And there was a man named Ananias, a, a believer, full of, the, full of the Holy Spirit, and God spoke to him and told him to go lay his hands on the Apostle Paul, pray for him. As you pick up here in Acts chapter 9, verse 9, this is talking about the Apostle Paul. It says that he was three days without sight. He neither ate nor drank. So the Apostle Paul was fasting. He was in prayer for three days without his sight. And what came from that? What came from his prayer and fasting is God spoke to Ananias and after a little back and forth between God and Ananias, Ananias went to see the Apostle Paul. He had some fear to overcome. And the Scripture says in verse 17 of Acts chapter 9, And Ananias went his way, and he entered the house, and laying his hands on him, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road as you came, has sent me that you may receive your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately there fell from his eyes something like scales, and he received his sight at once, and he arose and was baptized. The scripture goes on to say that he, he re received some food, he was strengthened, he spent some days with the disciples in Damascus, and then immediately he preached the Christ in the synagogues that he is the Son of God. One of the things that you can receive, something that prayer and fasting accomplishes, is it brings revelation. It opens your eyes, physically and spiritually. And, and I know, as we prayed for supernatural revelation during this, this season of prayer and fasting, I, I know it happened. I know it happened in me. I experienced it. I, and I knew it when it happened. I had a keen awareness uh, of of just a, a, a level of revelation as I would read the Word. It was as though I was there when I read the Word. But, but supernatural insight and revelation, we pray that all the time. In fact, let's stop and, and pray that prayer right now. Holy Spirit, we invite you. Please forgive me for, for entering into the Word of God without pausing and asking you, to lead me into truth, to bring supernatural revelation. I ask you for that now, Holy Spirit, for myself and for everyone who's listening to my voice. I thank you that you're leading us into truth, that you're bringing divine revelation and even divine application into our lives. Thank you for leading us into truth. Thank you for honoring our fast. Thank you for uh, honoring our prayers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And so as even uh, during these broadcasts, there have been times when I just, I, I sensed in my spirit what was coming out of my mouth was, was supernatural revelation. It, it, and it's available. And it's one of the things that uh, prayer and fasting accomplishes in our lives. So I'm going to pray for that right now, for everyone that, that's listening to my voice. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for supernatural revelation. I thank you for opening eyes. I thank you, Father, for opening the eyes of the lost, those who are spiritually blind. Thank you, Father. I thank you that even now, in this season of prayer and fasting, you're opening the eyes of the spiritually blind. Those walking outside of a personal revelation of Jesus Christ and a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. I thank you for opening their eyes in Jesus' name. I thank you that the, those prodigals are coming home 
in Jesus' name. I call them home now in the name of Jesus. And I thank you, Father, for even opening the, the spiritual eyes of uh, those who are, are Christians, but they, they, they need a higher level of revelation. Even for those that aren't even seeking you for it, I ask you to visit them in power and in clarity in the name of Jesus and bring supernatural revelation into their lives. I thank you for over and over and over, over the course of my Christian life, you've done that for me. You've done it for me when I wasn't even asking, and you've done it for me even when I did ask. And I'm asking you now in the name of Jesus to do that very thing in Jesus' name. Elevate our level, the level of revelation that we operate in, in the name of Jesus. And for those who are specifically fasting and praying and believing you for an increase in supernatural revelation in their lives, honor them now, Father. Honor their humility. You tell us that if we'll humble ourselves, you will exalt us. You will lift us up in due season. And so many of these people who've joined together with me in this season of prayer and fasting, it is due season for them because I know them. They've fasted. They're praying. They're, they're in your word. And they've sown financial seed into the harvest and even into this season of prayer and fasting. And because I know they have seed in the ground, I proclaim that this is due season for them, for each one in the name of Jesus. So thank you for scales falling off the eyes. Thank you for eyes opening. Thank you for keen supernatural elevation in the realm of revelation in the name of Jesus. I thank you that even as they read your word, that the, the pages will just be, high, the, the words will be highlighted by you in supernatural insight and revelation will be theirs in Jesus' name. Use them, Father. Use them mightily as they humble themselves before you. Use them mightily to share those words of revelation knowledge at every opportunity. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hey, DeFroza, thanks for joining us on the broadcast. So good to see you. Pastor Richard, God bless you. Hallelujah. Well, another... Uh, Result or, or another thing that, that fasting and prayer accomplishes is power. And that's a promise from Scripture. Jesus said, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be witnesses unto me wherever you go. That's his promise. Hallelujah. But in, in Luke chapter 4, Luke chapter 4, I want to highlight Jesus' wilderness fasting and temptation. I'm just going to pick some verses to highlight. In Luke chapter 4, verse 1, then Jesus, being filled with the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan, and he was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, being tempted for 40 days by the devil. And he, in those days, he ate nothing, and afterward, after they, when they had ended, he was hungry. So that's uh, Luke chapter 4, verses 1 and 2. Jesus had received his baptism by John in the Jordan, and he came from that, that experience. Remember, the Holy Spirit alighted upon him like a dove, and he was filled with the Holy Spirit. And from that experience, it says that he returned from the Jordan, 
And now he was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, tempted 40 days by the devil, and in those days he ate nothing. So this is 40 days of temptation and then fasting. And Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness for that occasion. Sometimes you're actually being led into the challenge that you're in. That's not the case every time. The thief is the one who comes to kill, steal, kill, and destroy. Steal, kill, and destroy. But, and, and Jesus is the one who comes to give life abundantly. And everything that happens in your life that is bad is not from God. But there are times when He leads us into the wilderness. I'm not talking about putting sickness and disease on your life. I'm talking about trials. Persecutions, things that we endure faithfully. Then Jesus, being filled with the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan, and he was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, where he was tempted by Satan. For 40 days, being tempted for 40 days by the devil. And in those days he ate nothing. Why would the Holy Spirit lead Jesus into the wilderness? Well, remember, while the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy, Jesus comes to give us abundant life. And we have to embrace the process that he brings us through. Sometimes he uses things to bring about his greater purposes in our lives. But what, the, what we do know is that when Jesus came out of the wilderness, verse 13, Now when the devil had ended every temptation, he departed from him until an opportune time. Verse 14, Then Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit to Galilee. He went from being filled with the Spirit to being led by the Spirit and then coming out of that 40 days of prayer and fasting and temptation, he returned in the power of the Spirit. In the power of the Spirit. That sounds to me like Supernatural elevation. Elevation in power. Through a process, prayer and fasting will accomplish and bring about power. Hey, Bishop Moses, thanks for joining us. Gilgil, I'm, I'm not familiar with, with that location. I'm going to have to look it up on Google Maps and See where work has taken you today. Thanks for joining us from, from Kenya, my brother. We're praying for you today. Prayer and fasting will accomplish power. Hey, Pastor Deus, thanks for joining us from Chato, Tanzania. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you that you have given us a process in Scripture that as we humble ourselves, you promise to lift us up. And as we humble ourselves in prayer and fasting, even submitting our very appetites to you,
that the flesh would decrease and the spirit increase. That's what we're believing you for, Father. In the name of Jesus. As you worked your work, bringing about a greater level of power in Jesus, the second person of the Trinity. I ask you to do that for your people today. In the name of Jesus. I think about those early followers of yours in the upper room waiting on the promise of the Father. Undoubtedly, because we know that the custom of the early church was fasting two days a week. And these people were specifically called and led by you to that place to wait upon the promise of the Father. I know they were fasting and they were praying. And you came on the day of Pentecost like the rushing of a mighty wind. And you transformed them in your power. They went to from scared and fearful and lacking understanding to standing up, boldly proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ in an instant. Hallelujah. I thank you for that. I thank you, Father. And I ask you, in the name of Jesus, for every person that has joined together with us in this season of prayer and fasting, that in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, quicken them. Quicken your spirit in them. Quicken them unto power in Jesus' name. That the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead would quicken their mortal bodies in the name of Jesus. And from this day forward, May they walk in a power that they've never seen in their lives before. And even allow them to see it. And call them to remembrance of this day. That they will know and be encouraged and strengthened for the next season of prayer and fasting that you bring them into. Thank you, Father. Thank you for supernatural power. Thank you that prayer and fasting brings it about in our lives. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Another thing that, that prayer and fasting accomplishes in our lives is it reveals the will of God. In Acts chapter 13, verse 2. Acts chapter 13, verse 2. So good to see so many of you joining us in the comment section. If you join us later on in the broadcast, like now, just say hello to me in the comment section and let me know where you're watching from. Acts 13, verse 2. I'm going to pick up in Acts verse 13, verse 1. Now, in the church... That was at Antioch, there were certain prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simeon, who was called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Manian, who had been brought up with Herod, Herod the Tetrarch, and Saul. Verse 2, as they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Spirit said, now separate to me Barnabas and Saul for the work which I have called them. Then, having fasted and prayed, and laid hands on them, they sent them away. What took place? The will of God was revealed. They were fasting, they were praying, they were waiting on the Lord, and God spoke. The Holy Spirit told them what to do. The Holy Spirit revealed the will and plan of God for Barnabas and Saul. So what did they do? They fasted some more, and they prayed, and they laid hands on them, 
com to, to commission them into the work that God had called them to do. When we, when we fast and pray, one of the things that it accomplishes is it reveals the will of God. And I know people that are on this fast with me. And I, I don't mean that I know people in a general way because that would be something that uh, I could say that would, would be true for many people. We're seeking the will of God for uh, something in our lives. But I, I know personally people who are seeking God for his will and his direction for their life in specific ways in this season of prayer and fasting. So let's pray for that right now. In the name of Jesus, Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus. On behalf of myself and everyone that's joined together with us in, in a season of prayer and fasting, that you would honor this fast by revealing your will in our lives. And we receive that right now in the name of Jesus. But I, I pray specifically for those who are desperate. They're calling out to you in their fastings and in their prayers. And I know in my own life, it seems like when I give myself to you in this way for a specific reason. There are times when you speak to me about many things, but somehow I miss hearing about the specific thing that I'm bringing before you. May that not be the case for those who are longing and calling out to you desperately for your will to be revealed to them about specific things areas of their lives and ministry and steps for the, that they're to take. I come against any blockage of the revealed will of God for their lives right now in Jesus' name. And I ask you, in the name of Jesus, like a, a beam of light from heaven, shine it to them. Quicken their spirit. Give them the next step. Show them the strategy. Guide them in wisdom and in the path of peace as your will unfolds before them. Thank you, Father. We receive that now. In the name of Jesus, amen. Thank you, Jesus. I just wanted to encourage you in this broadcast. These are things that happen when we fast and pray. Fasting and prayer accomplishes what I've shared with you today and many more. So persevere. Press forward. We're day 19. I said to double check myself, looking at my prayer and fasting guide. Day 19. We're pressing on and persevering through that 21st day and answers are coming and yea, are nigh now in Jesus' name. So we're praying today specifically as far as our prayer focus during this season of prayer and fasting for, for our Revival Now leadership and ministry team around the world. Let me share some scripture with you. Three scriptures very quickly uh, to encourage us and spurn us forward. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 12. Dear brothers and sisters, honors the, honor those who are your leaders in the Lord's work. They work hard among you and give you spiritual guidance. I'll read verse 13 also. Show them great respect and wholehearted love because of their work 
and live peaceably with, with each other. That's 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 12 and 13. What are we to do? We're to honor those who are your leaders in the Lord's work. And one of the ways that we're going to honor them is we're going to lift them up in prayer today. It, it's, uh, let me see here, 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 2. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 2. Pray this way for kings and all who are in authority so that we can live peaceful and quiet lives marked by godliness and dignity. So we see from this scripture that there's a blessing upon us when we honor and pray for and lift up our leaders. We're going to pray for them, for all who are in authority, so we can live peaceful and quiet lives marked by godliness and dignity. And Hebrews chapter 13, verse 7. I'm sorry, verse 17. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 17. Obey your spiritual leaders and do what they say. Their work is to watch over your souls and they are accountable to God. Give them reason to do this with joy and not with sorrow. That would certainly not be to your benefit. Hallelujah. Let's pray together. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for the, for the Revival Now leaders, leadership team and for our leaderships and our ministry teams across this country and the United States and around the world. I thank you for them, Father. I specifically lift up myself and Pastor Shannon Pastor Richard, Pastor Donna, Brenda here in the studio who directs and oversees our studio ministry. I lift up every one of our board of directors. Donis and Mike and Scott and Paul, I speak blessing over their lives. I lift before you Bishop Moses Masinde Fwamba in Kenya, my Bukusu brother. Bishop David Nkone in Tanzania. Pastor Nadim Danish in Lahore, Pakistan. These key vital leaders and ministers of revival now as I lift them before you, Father, we speak honor over their lives. And as we pray for them, we pray not only for them, but that this, this prayer would flow down through their family. through their siblings and their siblings' families. To their parents for those who are living. To their children and their children's children. 
I'm asking you, Father, for a soul winner's reward on these leaders and their families in the name of Jesus. I thank you for them, Father. We honor them today. We lift them up. We lift them up to you, Father. And we speak supernatural blessing over their lives. Over all of our lives as leaders and ministers of revival now. And over our families and everyone connected to us. May those who, who look to us, who connect to us, who share our spiritual DNA, may they be mightily blessed in Jesus' name. Bless them with supernatural protection, provision, blessing, and elevation. Grant them favor with you and with man. And may they never lack financially another day in their life. In Jesus' name. As they give themselves to you faithfully, to your service and to your work. May they never have to worry again about a financial need in their life. In the name of Jesus. Thank you for Damaris. and Haruma, and Upendo, and Destina, and Simon, and Dorothy, and Deborah, and Disa. And I know there are a couple that I'm forgetting, Father, but you know them. I know you know them because they're a family steeped in prayer. And you know them by name. And they know you, Father. Elevate them. Lift them high above the nations. Whatever physical need that they have in their bodies... I bind it in Jesus' name. I cancel every assignment of the wicked one toward them. And I loose healing from the top of their heads to the soles of their feet. In the name of Jesus, backs and bones and joints and blood pressure and sugar levels healed and level in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you for promising us that whatever we ask you in Jesus' name, by faith believing that it will happen. Thank you for honoring our petitions, our prayers, our fastings, our giving. And I thank you that it's done in Jesus' name. You are the Lord strong and mighty. 
mighty to save. Your El Shaddai more than enough. More than enough. Show yourself strong and mighty. To Nixon and Oscar and Yahshua. In the name of Jesus. I thank you, Father, that this year is going to be the greatest year of our lives. In Jesus' name. Greatest year in ministry, in Jesus' name. And we'll see the greatest number of souls come into the kingdom of God than any other year before. That this year will actually exceed all other years combined, in Jesus' name. Thank you. We, 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 I thank you, and we just receive fruitfulness and production And a soul winner's reward. Bless every one of these families. And bless everyone who contributes to their success. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. If you're listening to this broadcast and you, you're actually, you, you've never received Jesus Christ as your Savior, we've been praying for you. You're a part of that harvest of souls that we're fasting and praying and calling out to God for. If you'll humble yourself right now on this broadcast and ask Jesus Christ to forgive you of your sins and to come into your life. Not only will he do it, today is the best day of the rest of your life. Everything changes today. And it changes right now. All you have to do is pray this simple prayer with me. I'm going to offer a simple prayer of salvation, and if you'll repeat it after me from a place of sincerity in your heart, you can know this very moment that you're saved and you're on your way to heaven. Would you pray that prayer with me? Let's pray right now. Say, Heavenly Father, I admit that I've sinned. I believe Jesus died for my sins and rose from the grave to give me victory over sin and death. I confess my sinfulness. I repent. Please forgive me of my sin. Come into my heart and make me a new person. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. If you prayed that prayer with me, welcome to the family of God. You're my newest brother or sister in Christ. The Bible says in Romans chapter 10, verse 13, whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. When you prayed that prayer with me, you called on the name of the Lord. So by the authority of God's word, you're saved. You're born again, and you're on your way to heaven because you have Jesus in your heart. I'd like you to do something that many, many, many people have done. Go to my website at revivalnow.com. Revivalnow.com. You'll find a big red button on the front page that says, I just got saved. If you'll click that button, it'll take you to a place where you can view some video resources that I've prepared for you to help you get started in your Christian life. And you can fill out your contact information. And if you'll fill out your contact information in its entirety, we're going to send some resources to you to help you get started in your Christian life. So go to revivalnow.com, click I just got saved, 
and follow the prompts from there. And while you're there, scroll down to the bottom of the front page of our website and subscribe to our e-newsletter. We've got a new edition coming out this week. Just so it's completely free. Just subscribe, and then you can you can be a part of our family that uh, receives up updates and uh, reports about what God is doing. So just go to revivalnow.com and take care of your business there. Amen. Now it's time to it's it's giving time. It's an exciting time. We get to sow our financial seeds and what we're believing God for. It's the opportunity to partner with Revival Now financially. And when you do, every soul that's won into the kingdom of God through this ministry is credited to your account as well. So today and tomorrow is my last opportunity uh, broadcasting during this 21-day fast. And and only during these these 21 days am I sharing these uh, special opportunities to, to partner together with us. So here's, here's some different ways that you can partner together with us. $10 a month will fund 24 souls into the kingdom of God. That's based upon our average cost per soul. In 2022, we took our total expenditures and we divided that by the number of souls that were won into the kingdom of God, and it came out to $5. That means every $5 that you sow into this ministry will fund one soul coming into the kingdom of God. And that means that $10 a month would fund 24 souls a year. We're just making this partnership offer to partner together with us on a monthly basis throughout 2023. As God speaks to you, $50 a month would fund 120 souls into the kingdom this year. I believe God's speaking to some of you to partner together with us at $250 a month, $500 a month, and even $1,000 a month would impact and change the souls of 2,400 people this year. $5 is the greatest kingdom investment. It's the greatest investment that I know of in the world that you could change the life of someone for $5. So those are partnership opportunities. Perhaps God's not speaking to you about partnering together with us, but you'd like to sow a one-time financial seed. You can do that. $25 will purchase a soccer ball that we give to the students at every one of the schools in Kenya that we go into. We've seen over 60,000 souls, students, teachers, administrators, come to Christ last year through this school ministry. We always bring a soccer ball as a gift. Most of the schools have soccer fields, but they don't have soccer balls to play with. And so this is a significant blessing to the students and the staff of those schools. $25 will purchase one soccer ball for a Kenya school ministry. $100 will conduct a one-hour ministry event at a Kenya school. $500 will conduct an online evangelism meeting in Pakistan that feeds people, and it it takes us into village areas where they've never um, had the gospel shared with them, and they've never even uh, had the opportunity for a a foreigner to to minister to them. It's a great opportunity. Hundreds and thousands are going to come to Christ this year through this ministry. $2,000 or more would support the production of our discipleship materials that we give out at all of our crusades. When we, when we receive people, uh, uh, we lead people to Christ and they accept Jesus Christ as their Savior, we put these discipleship resources in their hands and we connect them to a pastor in their area for their ongoing discipleship. $5, a gift of $5,000 or more would help us conduct one crusade. So these are ways that your one-time gift can be a, a major blessing to lost people across this country, and around the world. Here's the big one that I'm believing God for. This is our truck and trailer that we we have to have. I'm calling it ours by faith in Jesus' name. 
It's going to cost between $143,000 and $160,000 for a semi-truck and a trailer that's equipped with a crane for loading and unloading our equipment. All of our equipment for our gospel crusades goes in one of these large shipping containers. That's our stage, our sound system, our instruments, the canopy, the lighting, the generator, everything. Everything goes in that container. We've already purchased it, but we have to be able to transport it in a timely manner. And the only way that we can do that is if we own our own equipment. If we have to wait or depend upon other people to load and unload and transport our equipment, it's, gonna, it's going to cost us an exorbitant amount of money, and it's, gonna, it's going to mess up our entire ministry schedule because time is valued differently in Africa. And when you have someone scheduled to pick your equipment up at noon on one day, it could be midnight that day, it could be noon the next day before they show up. And we have a plan. It's a really strong plan for July of this year. We're going to conduct three one-week mega crusades back-to-back. Three straight weeks in three different locations we're going to conduct these, this mega crusade. We're believing God for over 60,000 souls that are going to come into the kingdom just in that three-week period of time. But we have to be able to, to move precisely in order to execute that plan. So we have to have this equipment. That means that we have to have the money by March 15th of 2023 so that we can order the equipment and it will arrive make it through customs and everything that has to happen in order for us to utilize that equipment for our crusade that's going to start the first week in July. I believe God's speaking to someone that can actually fund this entire project, this entire uh, purchase of this equipment. And as God speaks to you, here are the ways that you can partner together with us financially. You can text RN Give to 888-364-4483. You can see we're available on Cash App, PayPal, Venmo, and you can use the Zelle Bank Transfer by using the email info at revivalnow.com. If you want to uh, partner together with us and sow a large financial seed, uh, you can just contact us at this email address at info at revivalnow.com, and we'll make the arrangements with you uh, to, to do a bank transfer however we need to do that. Uh, if you want to give by check, you can make your check payable to Revival Now and send it to P.O. Box 411, Marysville, Ohio, 43040. Today, as a gift to everyone who partners with us, anyone who sows a seed of any amount, we're going to give this great children's book, God, What is the Gift of Tongues? We're going to send that to everyone. Um, and, and also, we're going to send a pocket-sized version of the U.S. Constitution. To anyone who gives any amount today, this is our thank you to you for, for being a blessing to us. All you have to do is go to RevivalNow.com, click Invest Now, and scroll down to where it says Claim Your Giving Offer. Uh, fill out the form. That will give us the information so that we will be able to mail this. Uh, the other uh, platforms, they don't always uh, collect your mailing information. We'll need that to be able to send this gift to you. So that's all you have to do. Thank you so much. Thank you for, for believing us, in us and partnering with us. Over 120,000 souls are going to come into the kingdom of God through this ministry this year. It's already happening right now in January, and we're gearing up. Our ministry in Pakistan kicks off in February, and our school ministry uh, in Kenya will be kicking off, I believe, in February as well. And so there's a lot to be praying about. A lot to be fasting and praying about. Pray with us. Remember, we're believing God for open doors into over 200 schools in Kenya this year. Believe in God for this truck and trailer. We're believing God for big things in 2023. This is going to be the year of wonders. And remember, when you partner together with us financially, every soul that's won into the kingdom of God through this ministry is credited to your account as well. Hey, here's the ways you can connect with us because I forgot to do this. Um, you can connect with us, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, 
Revival Now Dan Steep, Twitter, Revival Now Dan. Make sure you go to our website and subscribe to our e-newsletter. There's also the Dan Steep podcast, available on all the podcasting platforms, and the Revival Now app, completely free. Just go to your Play Store and download the app on your phone. It's a great way to follow our live broadcasts, as well as you can, you can um, access all of our on-demand content right there on your phone. Here's our broadcast schedule. You'll catch me Monday to Friday, 10 a.m., weekdays, New York time, Tuesday evening, 7 p.m., New York time. The Marriage Minute's not running during the 21-day fast, but they're still releasing their podcast uh, each week. So that's our broadcast. It's going to run us actually through tomorrow. Um, What else can I tell you? Before you get off the broadcast, like, comment, share with your friends, And if you're not subscribed to our YouTube channel, Revival Now Dan Steep, make sure you do that. Make sure you like and follow us on our Facebook ministry page, Revival Now Dan Steep. Until next time, be blessed in Jesus' name.